Welcome to Keep It Civil with me, Winston Pagliaro. Today I'll be walking through many of the new features in SubAssembly Composer 2023 and 2024. I'll be doing so within the context of designing a lined stormwater planter. Specifically, this planter right in front of us from the City of Portland detail SW141. Now, if you couldn't care less about this planter, feel free to jump ahead to chapters where I've marked the new features. Let's zoom in here so you can see better and we can check out what this planter is made of. We can see we've got a two inch freeboard height above the overflow riser, a treatment depth of 12 inches, 24 inches of blended soil, two inches of filter aggregate, four inches of drain layer and walls on all sides. Now, before we open up SubAssembly Composer, let's hop over to Google Maps to look at a real planter and I'd like to mention one other element of this subassembly. So here we are in Northeast Portland, Oregon, and from plan view, we can see a stormwater planter in the center of my screen. As we approach the intersection of Cully Boulevard and Alberta Street, the parking lane tapers out and the stormwater planter widens. I'd like to build a subassembly for the planter that can account for this. This way, a polyline or feature line can be used as a horizontal target offset later in my corridor. Alternatively, a corridor transition could also be used, but it still requires me to build this subassembly with an offset parameter in mind. Here I am in Subassembly Composer 2024. I want to mention that for time's sake, I have sped up certain sections of this video. I will explain the important concepts of how I built this planter as we go. And as a reminder, you can use the chapters to skip to new features if that's all you're interested in. I will try to share this PKT file for those interested in reverse engineering it. The first thing I'm going to do is define some of the codes I'm going to use. And this brings us to our first new feature, code definition. You go up to define, define codes, and that opens up this dialog. To add a code, click create new code. And I've got my top code, uh, code for the wall of the planter, codes for various material layers that will be helpful for my volume quantities later. And as you can see, you can specify if these codes should apply to points, links, and or shapes. I've sped up this next part, but what I'm doing is first adding an offset target parameter. This is what's going to allow me to have a planter with variable width. I'm then adding input parameters that will allow the designer to have control over certain geometry. Before we move on to the geometry, I want to point out that I have not yet saved the subassembly, and you'll notice an asterisk by the name indicating just that. A small change, but a nice new feature in my opinion. As I start my first point, I want to point out that the codes we previously defined are selectable when adding geometry. A simple but powerful addition as this basically eliminates the possibility of mistakes in your codes from typos, assuming that you have previously defined them. So again, I'm going to speed through some of this, but I want to explain that I'm defining an auxiliary point that takes the delta x value from the input parameter representing the width of the planter. That value can be overridden by an offset target if one is specified. I then define another geometry point at the halfway point between the origin and the first point. And then I add auxiliary points down for the various layers of the planter. I define my other geometry relative to those auxiliary points so that if an offset target is specified, everything scales horizontally like I want it. After defining all our geometry and testing the offset, we're almost ready to save. Let's take a look at the packet settings. And here we'll encounter our next new feature, major and minor versioning. Personally, I use the minor versioning to help me, the designer, keep track of changes that I've made. And I use major versions when sharing changes with others, but ultimately 
it's up to you on how to organize your sub-assemblies. Now, as I save, you'll notice append version to PKT name, which is unchecked by default. This is another option on ways to organize your PKTs. New feature. The benefit of appending the name is that you get built-in version history. Alternatively, you can keep it all within one PKT file and change the major and minor versioning as you make changes. Now that I'm in Civil 3D, I'm going to open up my tool palette, Control 3, and create a new palette to house this subassembly. While I right click Import Subassemblies, you'll notice another change here. Link directly to PKT files is checked by default, and this is what's going to allow you to save to locations other than the C program data location you might be used to. So now you can save your PKT files to anywhere you want. After inserting the subassembly, I want to show you that in Prospector, we now see the subassemblies along with useful information like the path Civil 3D expects and the version. So we can quickly confirm if you have the latest version of a subassembly or not. And this is a good segue into discussing how Civil 3D handles changes made to an imported subassembly. For this, let's hop back into Subassembly Composer. And before we make a change, I'd actually like to point out one more new feature, Find and Replace. New feature. Under Edit. You'll see Find and Replace, or you can use the shortcuts Control F or H. After doing so, this dialog opens. And from here, this works very similarly to a text editor, except that we specify where in the subassembly composer we are searching. Particularly powerful for subassemblies that are very complex and layered, or perhaps you've been asked to edit a subassembly somebody else built that you're not familiar with. Now I'm going to make a minor change to the name of one of these parameters. And after updating all applied instances, I update the minor version before saving. Back in Civil 3D, I'll right click refresh on subassemblies in the prospector. And we see a notification indicating that Civil recognizes that something has changed. If I right click and update subassemblies, I see a successful update in the event viewer. And I can see that Civil 3D registers the change in version. One point to mention is that existing imported subassembly geometry should not be overwritten when doing this. For those interested in the planter subassembly, I wanted to show off the finished result. I've used my custom subassembly with a corridor transition to model a line planter with varying width. And after some configuring of my code set styles and defining new materials in my sample line group, I have a dynamic workflow whereby I can change the dimensions of the planter and see the quantity of treated runoff update in my material table. I can also generate a volume report that estimates quantities of treated runoff, concrete in the planter walls, soil media, and any other layers I build into the subassembly. I hope you learned a lot about what's new in Subassembly Composer 23 and 24. Thanks for watching.